Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Southeast Asia project. Ah, oh. <laughs> we have Keenan here working the cameras. Keenan's here, he is here. And uh, we will be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we will be doing the gold wash layer. Our second step is we will be putting in our background. Our third step is we will be putting in mid-ground. Our fourth step is putting in the next level of mid-ground. And then our very last step is our foreground here. Mm. So basically we're layering our values and really utilizing the rule of atmospheric perspective to create depth in our painting. Atmospheric perspective is a rule that as things go into the distance into space, your values get lighter. Okay, so you see? See how that feels like distance between here and here? Totally distance. Okay, we are gonna be using three paint brushes in this project. We got a wash one, we got a round two, and we got a round six. The washes is for that first step, but any large brush where you can lay down an even wash will work just fine. Um, we are using three paint colors, deep yellow, magenta, and black. I got my butch tray palette. I already transferred my outline using um, my graphite paper. There are a lot of examples of me showing how to use that. You can use the Eiffel Tower tutorial if you're not sure how to use it. That's a great tutorial. And one thing that I did before I started mm -hmm. is I took my outline and I paid attention to the value shifts and I numbered which step I will be painting to match my foreground midground. Okay. Oh, wow. Because there's a lot of layers here and it's really easy to be like, wait a second, which part am I painting here? So, um, the background is one and then here I put two. So you can just look at your step-by-step -step and your reference photo, identify the different values. And if it's helpful for you to number them on your outline, um, so then you don't have to try and figure that out while you're painting, go ahead and go ahead and do that. Nice. Or you can just follow me. That seems super helpful. Um, now, before we get started, I just want to acknowledge that someone let us know when the project was announced that Southeast Asia actually refers to 13 different countries, um, with all different cultures and, you know, they're different things. And so this project is mistitled, um, and that's totally my fault. It was not my uh, confidence in where I knew things were geographically that I felt comfortable naming it with a country that I wasn't familiar with, but that is on me. I should have done the research, so I just want to acknowledge it. This actually is in Myanmar, um, and I don't. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And the reference, one of the reference photos that I use, I found on Unsplash from Charlie Castello. So Charlie, thank you so much. Well, thanks, Charlie. And um, so that is where this takes place. But other countries in there are um, like the Philippines, Thailand. Cool. Things like that. So there's 13 different ones. This one specifically is Myanmar. All right, we're going to do our oath and then we are going to move into painting. So if you can raise your right hand. And repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. We got the bell. We found it. Good job, Katie. It was delivered successfully. <laughs> okay, so we are going to start with our first wash. And I'm just going to jump right into painting. Let's get this going. This Go. is a fun project. So I'm gonna grab some deep yellow, put it in my middle. I'm gonna grab a little bit of magenta. And that is very pink, too pink. Mm, that's very pink. That's fine, I'm just gonna grab more yellow. What I'm going for is almost like a gold color. Mm. So I only needed a little bit of magenta. Now if you get in this situation where you're like, I'm out of color and I'm still not at the color I want, put a little bit more color in there. There we go, that feels better. And then you can take a scratch paper before and just kind of test it. That's good, maybe a little bit more yellow. All right, now I'm going to do a value wash where my lightest value starts at the top and then it gets darker as it goes down, okay? So I have some yellow. This one I'm just gonna use straight yellow and then I'll pull more into this orange as I go down. 
get my brush wet so it's really easy to move that paint. And I'm just gonna paint over my outlines. Don't worry about trying to uh, work around it. That's not what we're doing here. For washes that you've done similar to this before, have you ever done water first? Yes. Do you prefer, do you prefer one or the other? So the thing with the water first is sometimes if you work a little bit slower, it's easier to get an even wash with the water first. Um, if you work quickly, then you can just lay the paint down at the same time. Uh, it really just depends on my mood, honestly. I don't know if I've found like huge success with one over the other besides the speed at which you paint. And I feel pretty comfortable painting fast. Um, so if you're struggling to paint fast and you are not getting an even wash, try wetting your water. <laughs> wetting your water. Wetting your water. <laughs> <laughs> wetting your paper first. And then um, putting that paint in and just kind of work it back and forth. Also pay attention to your brushes. If you're using a round six to try and get an even wash on this nine by 12 paper, that's gonna be rough. And it's just the simple fact that this is a large sheet and that's a smaller brush, okay? Yep. All right, now what we need to do, okay, so you see my light to dark. Now it did lighten up a little bit here at the bottom, but I'm not too worried about that because I know all of this will essentially be black. Ah, you'll so cover as, it up. Yeah, as long as I basically, when it gets to here, where the buildings start, that there is a light to dark value, we're good. Okay, now I'm gonna take my um, heat it craft tool and make sure this is totally dry, okay? So I dried my layer, it's nice and dry. And you can see my paper kind of warped a tiny bit. If you want to dry it a little bit more to flatten it out, you can, but I feel pretty good about where it's at. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my background, my furthest layer, which means if we're looking at our, on our scales of value, it's just one click of value darker than the background that we've already painted. Okay. So I'm going to just take that same mixture that I have going on here and um, kind of just see what that looks like. Sometimes what's helpful if you want to test it before is like as you're painting this wash, you can do a quick swipe on a scratch paper and then paint on top of it and see if that shows up. If it shows up, it's like a way that you can test the values without putting it down on your actual painting. So I'm, that might even be a little bit dark. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. That feels a little bit better to me. This value is kind of in between what's back there and this one. Okay, you see that difference? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that. And I'm gonna paint, following my, my little numbers here, <laughs> I'm gonna paint this guy first. And I like to start with my darkest value and then add water to kind of blend it out. Now you can see I'm just painting over the other layers and that's because um, I know that I'll paint on top of it, so I'm not too worried about it showing up. Okay, and then another layer two is this right here. And if you need to switch to your round two to do these really small brush strokes, feel free to. Okay, and I'm just doing my three smallest hot air balloons, the ones that are furthest away from me. Okay, and one thing that I'm gonna do here, sorry, I'm 
focusing on this painting. So I kind of like did this background building and we want to let that dry. There's another building right underneath it right here that's small that's also going to be the same value. But you want to make sure that this is dry before you paint that one. Okay. And what I really love about this technique, well one, I feel like it's pretty straightforward and I appreciate techniques that are pretty straightforward, but like you're gonna get some blooms in here a little bit as you layer these different washes and I want you to embrace it. And I love that you get to like lay a value down and just kind of like blend it out. It's like disappearing into like mist or you know atmosphere and space and I think that's just really fun. It is. Um, and then this building right here is also this kind of similar value. Okay, that is step two, okay? You wanna make sure this is dry. And then we'll move on to step three. And you might be thinking at this point, what's going on? We'll get there, you guys. This, this kind of thing just like builds, builds. Yeah. So at this point you're like, I'm not sure what's happening and I'm telling you, we'll get there, okay? like a city appearing from the mist. Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna move on to three. So again, we wanna make sure that our value is a little bit darker. Now, what I'm going to do to kind of start, cause you can keep just mixing yellow and magenta and just go brighter in your values. So it's kind of adjusting your value by hue and getting like that saturation. But I want, I like that this transitions from a gold color to a black color. And in order for that to like kind of transition in a way that makes sense, we have to start introducing brown and start desaturating our colors a little bit. So then the black foreground and the dark brown next to foreground um, doesn't feel so separate. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we have to, so I have yellow. So it's kind of like this peach goldy color. And let's see what happens when I grab just a little bit of black. Turns it brown, but I want it to be warmer than that. So I'm gonna grab more yellow. And the color we're trying to match or something similar is this one here. So it's like a burnt orange color. So a little bit more yellow a little bit more magenta and a tiny, tiny bit of black. Let's see where we're at with that. That feels pretty good. And let's go for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this right here, this little piece right here, and this piece over here, which I forgot to trace, but that's okay. I will add it anyway. And then this guy over here. So I like to go along the edge and kind of follow the contour, the line of it, and then kind of blend out from there. And I really want to encourage you all to choose your color. So if you're, if you're just like, no, I want brighter color, or brighter saturation or less saturation, follow your instincts, follow what your artistic heart and mind are, mind are telling you. Follow it, trust it, believe it. Believe it. Right here. So try and follow your outline because we are doing um, 
but how do I say this? There are a lot of details and it's easy for them to kind of get lost in between the layers. So if you notice like, oh, actually this shape kind of got off kelter a little bit or something's going on, just keep going and like embrace it and allow yourself to not have something that's like, it doesn't have to be perfect is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's okay. So I was curious about the size of this country, square miles wise, because I ask that a lot. Mm -hmm. It is just like barely smaller than Texas. Whoa. Uh -huh. Texas is big. Texas is large. So it's 261,000 square miles. And Texas is 268,000 square miles. Holy cow. But Mian Mianima, Mianima is double the population. Whoa. Yeah. Sorry, I'm doing little tiny breast strokes. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm like doing really small marks, I can't give my full attention. So. Listen, Sarah, we're here to <laughs> read about the facts, not like, paint. I just realized that my reactions weren't like, you know, cause I'm just like, in No, they it. were great. They're what I expected while you're painting. <laughs> you're like, this is, this is all I get from you really this all is, the this time. This is normal. This is you. So I'm just adding a little bit more color and saturation to my mixture. Cause I'm kind of looking at my reference photo. I want to, and just so you guys know, like reference photos, taking your artwork and making any reproductions of it is always a tricky game. So sometimes reference photos in general cannot match the same color or there's a slight change in value just due to the nature of scanning your work, editing your work. It depends on the printers you use. It depends on the paper you use. It depends on the colors that you use. I mean, there is so much that goes into making um, prints. So all of that is to say that your reference photos, like if you're not getting the same exact color from a reference photo, do not despair. Sometimes it has nothing to do with what you're doing and more to do with the fact that maybe what you're painting actually matches my original, but we were not able to match the original in the reference photo. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. It's going to vary. It's going to vary. And I just really feel like this building needs to be more colorful. So I'm gonna add yellow. You can just do yellow washes straight over. Like, let's see what that does. Ooh, that looks cool. And because we're adding different layers of color and moisture, there will be a little bit of blooms, but I'm okay with that. I like blooms. And then we're gonna do, oh, I'm gonna switch to my two because we have this little building kind of peeking through right here. And this is where having just different sizes brushes are a little bit more. I kind of wish that I went darker with my outlines because I can see some of my lines getting lost, covered mm. up, but that's all right. I'm just going to um, eyeball it. It's not the worst thing. Just checking. Okay, tree is going to cover that. This is going to be in between here. Guess what Myanmar's, Myanmar's national bird is? What? A peacock. <gasps> okay, do you want to hear a funny story about a peacock? Yes, I do. When I went and stayed, so uh, I went to Italy not too long ago, and it was so great. And where we stayed in some of the areas was Florence. And we did an Airbnb. And the lady was giving us a tour of this house that she remodeled that we were staying at in our Airbnb in Florence. And she was just like, by the way, <laughs> you're going to see a peacock. <laughs> she was like, for my birthday, my daughter's got me a peacock and uh, he hangs out. So you might see him just kind of around the property. <laughs> and I was just like, this is amazing. What life do you live that your daughters gave you a peacock for your birthday? You just have a, a <laughs> peacock buddy hanging out? His name was Patrick. Patrick? Yeah. 
Patrick what a good the Peacock. Patrick the Peacock. What a good name. Beautiful. It was just, I just thought that that was hilarious and it made me so happy that, you know, uh, some daughters would give their mother a peacock for their birthday. So great. Someday. Someday. I'm going to make this side. It's actually super hard to make buildings symmetrical, even with outlines. So I'm trying to do the best that I can, but I'm giving myself grace here. And I hope you guys give your, yourself, yourselves, yourselves, yourselves some grace. Cause uh, it's actually really tricky. <clears throat> yeah. Don't, don't criticize too hard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do this <clears throat> hot air balloon with that same kind of value. Kim, were you able to find anything about hot air balloons? Yeah, they have a hot air balloon festival. Really? Yeah. When is it? Well, let me find out. I need to visit. I need to go when this is happening. Could you imagine seeing this? I think it's three hundred and forty dollars a person. Okay. We'll I'll set up a GoFundMe. Yes. <laughs> we'll share the link with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like it starts. This is back from 2017, though. I don't see anything newer. Oh, well, maybe COVID. Mm-hmm. Ballooning season in Bagan, B-A-G-A-N, runs from the beginning of October to the middle of April. So it's just going. Whoa! One of the things I read is one of the best ways to view this city in Myanmar is by hot air balloon. We got to go. Okay. By we, I mean me. Yeah. Well. You can do whatever you want, Keenan. I'm going. All I would, right. I would love to go, but sounds like you've got different plans. <laughs> you can go, but just not at the same time as me. Go on a different day. It, go, don't choose the same day, Keenan. Don't do it the same. October to April. Stop Did you hear the time me. frame? Stop trying to be me. It's funny you should say that. I just started a watercolor page. <laughs> <laughs> I also am comfortable painting fast. I rarely get the object painted properly, though. <laughs> uh, also, Cameron just had a hot air balloon festival. Really? Yes, which is a city near Hamilton. Um, I chased down and got to watch a hot air balloon kind of tussle with a tree. Whoa. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Because they did a great job. They touched the very top of the tree and landed right next to it. Nice. It was sweet. Okay. Now we are going to do number four. Number four is really just this building right here. And then the rest of this foreground is um, black or like dark brown or wherever your values are. So I have all these kind of different orange and gold mixtures. This is where we're going to embrace the black a little bit more. Um, but I don't want to totally gray out my color. So I'm going to add a little bit in there. And then a good way to test if your value, besides like the scratch paper that we were talking about, um, to test your values is actually where the colors are going to be next to each other. Like right here, you can see this building is right next to number three. You can just put a color down and be like, oh, yep, that shows up. Okay, now I can paint my whole thing that. You see? Yeah. Also, like what you were saying earlier about you don't want it to be too contrasty between the next layer. Yeah. This is good contrasty. Yeah. And you might have to do a couple layers depending on how dark you want it to be, depending on, you know, the saturation, all of that kind of stuff. Now, I have to try and find my outline. There we go. Maybe needs to be a little bit darker. And so you can just make these adjustments as you're going, as you're looking at this and you're like, oh, maybe a little bit darker. Go ahead and add that in there. I actually really love it, even though we're focusing on different values to kind of create that atmospheric perspective. I love it when there's little hints of colors that shine through like right there. Yeah. Um, it might not be totally accurate, but I think it adds <laughs> visual interest. 
and I'm all about that. And this is where I kind of got to eyeball some things a little bit since my, especially right here, my outline got a little bit lost. My chair is quite creaky and I apologize. We'll forgive you, but just this one time. Thank you. Does that, does that equal like the whole time we're filming this? Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure. Can't mess I... up again. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to try and do a thin little line up here. Sorry, I'm a little bit shaky. I can tell it's getting close to lunch by how shaky my <laughs> hand is. Oh, that makes sense. Because okay. I was getting hangry. You know, oh, was... hangry is next. Hangry is next level for me. I was kind of like, why is Sarah even using this color? <laughs> <laughs> why am I here? Why aren't I teaching this? <laughs> How did our role switch so quickly? It's just yesterday that I was painting with everyone. We've got to do a April Fools where you're the one teaching the lesson <laughs> and I'm running the cameras. We've talked about it so many times. We have a million ideas for April Fools. So many. Delivery, we're not quite... At one there point, yet. I even never mind. I'm not going to give. Don't much give away. it away because we'll do it one day, maybe. <laughs> one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do my other hot air balloons. And then more yellow. Actually, this tree right here is a four. By four, I mean step four. Yeah, I was like, you, s like. On a scale of one to 10, it's a four, so that's kind of <laughs> rude. You're like, that's a beautiful tree. It's a beautiful tree. Lift up your brush as you get kind of to the edges. Let some light in there. I'm gonna do one more drop of value. I want it to show up a little bit darker. It kind of was too close to the values around it. I'm messing with it too much. I know that I am. So I'm going to force myself to move on. Okay. Let's do our hot air balloons. Hot air balloons are actually like really funny in shape. I struggle with making them like the round that they need to be. They're so round. Yeah. It throws me off every time. Yeah, the drone footage I got of these in Cameron are, it, it's kind of sunset-ish time frame. Yeah. It's so pretty. And they are. They're like, I mean, it makes sense. It might even sound ridiculous what I'm about to say, but they're so symmetrical. All the, They're so perfectly round. Mm -hmm. They just, they just, they're so detached from the things around them. Because they're also very bright colors. Yeah. feels pretty good. I'm making sure that there aren't any other areas that I need to kind of do before I move on to the last, the last step. Nice. Okay, one thing I'm gonna do really quick, which if you did, how do I say this? We try and do it layer by layer and not go back into previous layers because then that makes up, messes up all the other layers. But sometimes I feel like I can make an adjustment without hurting anything. And this building, I just feel like needs to be saturated. I want that color to be stronger. So I'm mixing just yellow and a little bit of magenta. And I'm just going to do 
a quick little layer. Now you want to be careful not to activate the other layers around it. This is where it gets really tricky and why I'm, what I mean when I say like, when you're trying to do a painting like this, it's really hard to go back in after you've done layers on top. But sometimes if you're careful, you can get away with it. It's so funny how different this is compared to my outline because like I lost my outline a little bit so I've been kind of making up some shapes <laughs> and just looking at my reference I'm like oh that's very different <laughs> all right okay that feels better to me and so if you're feeling a little bit brave and you want to adjust just a couple of things before you move on into our last why not it's just a piece of paper Let's just see what happens, you know? And maybe I'm not being a good example by doing this, but it's, this is, sometimes you don't do things perfectly the first time, you know? Oh, I do know that. <laughs> okay, that might've gotten too dark. I'm gonna lift some of this up actually. Cause I kind of liked how in this reference photo, the building side kind of like bled into the background. Mm. I mean, the background looks like it was a little bit darker value anyway, but I think I'm missing that. But I don't know if I can like blend it out without messing up my wash. Let's just see, let's just. It's worth a try. It's worth it, it's worth it. Little try here. Oh yeah, you see it changed the color. I lifted up the background color. I'm just gonna try and spread this out. This is the danger, you guys. This is what I was trying to get you to avoid. Uh, you see that? How it's lighter now, that whole thing? Yep. I wonder if I could, nope, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna slow my roll. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna work out this part. And then I'm gonna stop touching it. And then I'm gonna do my foreground. And then we'll see where we're at. Nice. Okay. Okay. I wonder if I should do almost another building right there. I was going to suggest that. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I'm just going to add... and kind of follow the shape of my wash that I messed up. Cre recreated. <laughs> kind of blend out. It, it's gonna be, because it's higher, it's gonna be furthest, which means it just has to be a light value. Nothing too dark here. It's so sweet. <laughs> nice building. <laughs> That's gonna work out okay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Can't even tell. Let that dry. And you can add some extra saturation to some of these hot air balloons if you're missing some of that really gold color. Farthest one I would try and leave alone though. All right. All right, now we are going to do our foreground, which is gonna be our darkest layer. I'm gonna take black and mix it with the brown gold that I already have. This is just gonna add a little bit of color into that black, so then the straight black doesn't feel super disjointed from the rest of our painting, but we do want it to be the darkest value. So once I get that mixed, I'm just gonna start putting it in. And again, my, some of my outline might have gotten a little bit lost. So just try and eyeball it. Um, try and do the best you can, but don't stress, okay? I'm not stressed about it at all. Great.
and that looks so cool. The layers, I mean, a silhouette is one of my favorite things anyway, but the layers yeah. make it so cool. Yeah. Okay, so at this, like right here, you can see in our reference photo that like a tree, like we have foliage kind of coming out around this whole thing. So I'm just gonna do kind of roundish shapes. And then as we get kind of along the edge, um, I'll go back in and um, do details on the tree. Does that make sense? I'm yeah. just gonna leave it for now. Yes. Since I'm using my six and just kind of start to put this in. Okay. And then Now this outline really got, really disappeared. So I'm just gonna go for what I can see and then try and mirror it. Oh, you've got it. I can see it on the side cam. Can you? Mm-hmm. again <laughs> trying to find my building edge they're both a little taller yes this would be a fun game too what do you mean only i can see the outline <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it paint to survive. Whoever gets closest wins. Yeah. I would fail. <laughs> I would not be the winner of that. That's okay. Okay, so I was just kind of putting in my general shapes and then now I can try and go in and like really tighten these up. Tighten them up with a round two with some detail lines and then I'll go in with my um, shrubbery but First, I'm just gonna put this in. So usually like the larger chunks, spaces, I'll paint with the larger brush and then go in with a two to uh, make adjustments. Oh, I see, you could see them the whole time. I could, I could see the tips the whole time, but I knew I wanted to do that with it too. Wow, Sarah. <laughs> I, I had to make you feel betrayed. important somehow, Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's what I thought the bell responsibility was for. You're right, you're right. Yours. And I continue right. that on without a bell. That was really impressive. You know Thank you. I don't know. Really, it was uncanny as to how close they probably couldn't even tell that they we could. didn't have a bell. Thank you. You know what? I believe that. Oh, you know what? Because we're friends again, I'm going to close my watercolor Instagram. <laughs> and I'm just going to do sound effects now. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now I kind of like... I mean, I'm sure my buildings aren't perfectly symmetrical, but I feel like overall they're doing all right. Um, maybe some slight adjustments here and there. But when it comes to my foliage, what I'm gonna do with that is similar to um, like whenever we do like trees or something, I'm gonna take, do smaller marks along the edges here and try not to make them too even. And then what I like to do is using my one inch brush There we go. 
go. Cool. And I'm just gonna kind of do that where there obviously is kind of like tree areas. So I do a paint a little chunk, take my one inch wash. And if you have a smaller wash, cause this is a pretty big brush for such a small area, you can use a smaller wash and do the same thing. Have a little bit more control, but I think a one inch works fine. And you can even use the corner of your wash if you wanna get a smaller area. or even grabbing some of the paint using that corner and putting some texture in. That works too. I do like that, that is cool. So whatever, whatever way you wanna go about this, there's many ways that you can and it's just up to you. That's neat. And I'm going to widen this because if you see, I did an orange layer here, but I didn't paint down enough. You see how there's like this really light value mm. in between there? Well, if you, you can leave that one and maybe you wouldn't even notice it, but for me, it's really obvious. So what I could do is I could actually just kind of cover that up and just change the shape of my building. And that way it's just not as prominent. I feel like this tower is leaning a little bit. Is it? Does it feel like it's going to the left a little? This tower. Mm, let me see here. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking at it from just the a overhead. Little bit. So you I'm know just... what? There's nothing wrong adding a little square footage to a building. That's right. <laughs> or you can just thicken up the left hand side. Oh. Also that. This looks cool. That looks sweet. I'm gonna add some foliage here and just kind of round this out and use my one inch wash. Add some texture. I love this area the most, I think, right here. I like from that, yes, a little more left for me and then to all the way to the right because of the hot air balloons and the yeah. depths. Can we talk about how this totally ended up working out? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> And I'm not even sure if it's a building or a hill really far away. I don't know either, but that was problem solving in real life, my friends. You got to see it firsthand. If anything, that just shows you guys get to make up things as you go. <laughs> yes. This is a place. I just added a totally new building. Hopefully but you're it, okay with it. Okay. That's it. That's our project. Wow. It's done. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. I hope that this is a great lesson and practice for you in values and understanding that just by slightly adjusting values as you move forward, you can create depth into your painting. Um, if you're on Instagram, we would love to see your work. You can tag us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art or hashtag let's make art watercolor. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can join our very large but very supportive and kind community um, called let's make art watercolor. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. All right. I'll see you guys later. Thanks, Keenan. Thank you. Bye.